So hello everyone, welcome to a new, well I guess the only video on this channel, and in this video we're going to talk about the Tokyo All Around Rhythmic Gymnastics Review. Um, I have a plan to make other videos on the topic of Rhythmic Gymnastics, so if you have any questions leave them in the comments below, but essentially what I'm going to talk about is kind of some of the drama surrounding each of like the nations that had athletes in the all-around final um and then we'll talk later about the drama about the podium and kind of my thoughts on the entire situation so if you're interested just keep on i guess listening because this is more of like a podcast on youtube with visuals so i hope you enjoy so i'm gonna kind of like i said talk about each team and then kind of talk about what i think about it and the scores so I think we're going to start off with Team Italy. So I think it was pretty... So to Italy sent two athletes to the Olympics. Alexander, Alexandra Adrugiculese and Milena, Milena Baldassari. I am so sorry. I'm butchering these names. But I think there was kind of like a general consensus that people thought that Sofia Raffaelli would go instead of Alexandra Adrugiculese. Mainly because the last two times... Alexandra competed. It was kind of just a hot mess. She was dropping her apparatuses. I think in the European Championships, she dropped the apparatuses like at least in every single routine. She didn't even make the all around final at Euros. Um, and at Euros, it's the top 24, not even the top 10. So it, it was pretty much a disaster for her. And at Italian Championships, she wasn't really looking all that much better. Why, whereas Sofia Raffaelli was the she got in the top 10 in Euros, she was winning medals in the World Cup series, uh, she was essentially doing really good this year, and from what I understand, Milena wasn't even sent to Euros, I'm not really sure why, and it kind of seems like she was coming back from some kind of injury, but essentially Milena and Alexandra won the spots for Italy, so that's kind of what was going on with Italy, uh, so it was not really surprising to me that Alexandra did not make the final. Um, she wasn't as much of a hot mess as before, but she kind of still was a, not really her best. Uh, so I guess there's kind of some controversy whether Sofia Ra Raffaelli should have gone instead of Alexandra Adrugiculese. But in, nonetheless, Milena Bald Baldassari looked fantastic. This was a fantastic, I think, competition from her. I really enjoyed watching her and whatnot. So that's kind of Team Italy, a little drama there. I don't think there's much drama. And congratulations to Milena on a great all-around competition. As for Bulgaria, so Catherine Tasseva announced her retirement after the qualifications. Um, Tasseva is low-key known for having the Olympic rings tattooed on her before the spots were even announced, so good for her. We don't really know why this tattoo was there. Was a motivation for her? I don't really know. I don't understand why you tattoo the Olympic rings before the Olympics, especially before you even are technically, like, officially going, even though it's, like, really obvious you would be going. I, I don't know. Maybe the Bulgarian Federation told her that she would go, so... Anyways, the top scoring uh, Bulgarian in qualifications, Boriana Kalin, again, sorry for the butcher if I am. Um, wow, she didn't really have a great qualifications. I think she didn't finish with the apparatus on clubs, was it? I, I don't really remember. She didn't finish with the apparatus in one of the apparatuses and that is a very big deduction so she didn't really have a great qualifying but still she has a lot of difficulty and was able to make up for it and qualify to the final where she performed much better so uh ukraine is probably just so much drama all the time i don't even know where to get started from there essentially ukraine um got their two spots from the 2019 world championships through Vlada Nikolchenka and Kristina Pogranichna. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names and whatnot. Every time I hear a Ukrainian last name uh, that ends in Enko and it's a girl, they pronounce it as Enka. So who knows? Maybe I'm pronouncing all this wrong. Maybe someone who's Ukrainian can let me know. But 
Anyways, Vlada and Christina got the two spots for Ukraine, but um, the head of the Ukrainian delegation, uh, Irina Der Derugna, um, everyone just refers to her as Deru, so I don't know. Nonetheless, does not really seem to like Christina, mainly because she doesn't train with her and every other girl on the national team seems to train in Kyiv in the Darugna school except for Christina who trains in Lviv so I think that's why she doesn't like her not really sure um nonetheless Darugna doesn't like her doesn't watch her even when she's competing so there's kind of that drama but um after the Euros, I, or sorry, the last World Championships, I think we all know there was the whole entire COVID pandemic and everything kind of went in the air. So from what I understand, at the last European Championships in Kyiv, Vlada Nikolchenka and Yeva Meleschuk competed for Ukraine. Yeva Meleschuk ended up switching to groups shortly after and ended up competing for the Ukrainian group at the Olympics. Vlada Nikolchenka um was dealing with quite a lot from what i understand some anxiety issues and then covid and then she was battling covid and has a lot of like long covid i guess repercussions and hasn't been training and all that stuff so it, it's just a whole drama there i think i'll just lightly mention victoria onoprienka who uh, I don't think she's ever gone to the World Championships, a uh, 17 year old who ended up getting chosen for Ukraine. But in 2021, for most of the World Cups, Ukraine was sending Kristina Pogonichna and Victoria Onoprienka to these events where like other countries were sending their top two. So it was kind of obvious that Ukraine was kind of viewing these two girls as their top two. Then Euros came and as far as we know, it was supposed to be Kristina Pogonichna and Victoria Onoprienka. And then like literally last minute, it was like three days before you see Vlada on an airplane posting on Instagram how she's going to Euros and Vlada ended up going for Euros and kind of took, like quote unquote, took Kristina's spot because Kristina was supposed to compete like three apparatuses and then Victoria four and I think it's a millennia, millennia tour would compete one, but then um, Vlada ended up competing three and Christina only one and Victoria still ended up competing all her four. Um, so after that point, everyone was like, okay, it looks like Darug and I was really pushing for Vlada to go. But, um, from what I understand, the Ukrainian, uh, Olympic committee, so like along with Darug and I ended up selecting, um, Victoria Anapriyanka and Kristina Pogonichna to go to Tokyo. So those two ended up getting selected. Right after, um, Vlada posted and said that she's taking a break from gymnastics and she's just kind of focusing on herself and whatnot. So who knows if Vlada's going to be back or not, but that's kind of the drama there. And then just before the Olympics, Darugina was saying that she still wished Vlada was there and it was not Christina, even though like everyone knew that, but you don't need to announce it, but she was announcing it anyway. And then even at, like during the Olympics or after the Olympics, she made a post saying that you quote unquote, Ukraine's going to come out with more interesting girls and that um, she wishes Vlada was there, but I, I don't really know what's her obsession with Vlada because at the very last competition in Holon, um, prior to leaving for Tokyo, Vlada was like the third ranked Ukrainian girl. Christina was first and Victoria was second. So I don't know, that's just a whole mess. It seems like everyone's rooting for Christina to come out of this all alive and well. Um, Darugina wouldn't let, uh, from what we understand, I, I guess I don't speak Ukrainian. I don't know if there's something actually wrong with like, or something that happened and that like changed the situation, but Christina's coach didn't end up going with her to Tokyo. Um, like I said, Darugina won't even watch her compete, so God knows what's going on there. Luckily, Darugina's daughter, Irisha, is like super sweet to Christina. Even Christina thanked her in an Instagram post. She cried after Christina's last performance and she was really happy for Christina and was really supportive to Christina. So maybe this is just like the better situation all around, so. I just hope Christina's a well in all this. But anyways, congrats to those two girls. Um, after that whole entire mouthful, 
I think we can move on to Team Israel. There was no drama when it came to choosing this team. It was pretty obvious that it was going to be Nicole Zellickman and Lenoy Ashram, uh, in which Lenoy um, had a very big mistake in her hoop exercise. While I'm not the queen of the code of points, from what I understand, she would have scored a 27 um, instead of like her 23 that she ended up scoring and whatnot. So if she would have scored this 27, it would have been a significant difference. So she was kind of like her scores were kind of, I guess, artificially deflated after the qualification round. But she's basically been the only girl to really compete against the Averina twins, all quad minus after COVID, after COVID, Boriana Kalen and the next group two I'll talk about um, really kind of put some more pressure on the Averina twins as long, along with Sophia Raffaelli. So, uh, we'll get into the Averina twins in a moment, but she's just kind of been their main competitor throughout the quad and kind of known to be like a gymnast with high difficulty. Now we're going to talk about the Bella Russian girls, um, Anastasia, Anastasia Salos. Oh God, I said that so funny. And Alina Garnasco. Um, I, again, I probably pronounced this all wrong, but from what I understand and the basic Cyrillic I understand that I know, uh, Alina's name starts with a G, but in English they put it with a H. I, I don't know. So again, funny enough, kind of transliteration issues going on there. Um, I love these two. These two are my favorite. They seem very happy, like, or well, maybe less Anastasia, um, than... Alina, Alina's like always like dancing, kind of just doing her own thing. Uh, they mentioned that at Tokyo when she like, there's kind of like a back room so people can like prepare before they like go out on the carpet. And instead of like practicing in the back room, she was um, embroidering to calm her nerves. So go her, just do your own thing and be your own queen. And like thankfully homegirl came home with a bronze medal so woohoo we love you um nonetheless not really much more to say there other than she's a queen and she just kind of does whatever she wants so um, nonetheless like I was saying they kind of came out of a with a bang after covid um Alina Garnasco got the same score as Lenoy at Europeans in Kiev so almost got gold but due to tie breaks uh Lenoy won and Salos and her, or yeah, Anastasia and Alina, those two really have gotten a decent amount of medals throughout like World Cups, the World Cup series and whatnot. So those two are kind of came out of the like blue, not really, I don't know. They just became stronger after the pandemic. Um, and their other teammate who went to the last Olympics kind of fell behind after the all the like pandemic and has not gone and I think she has announced her retirement I can't say her name so I'm not gonna try I'm just gonna post the retirement of her then I think it was pretty obvious that Russia was gonna take the Averina sisters however um within Russia it seems like Lala Kramarenko or Kramarenka we really don't know at this point I'm sorry for my pronunciation was kind of like I don't know it seems like Viner really wants her to succeed and do quite well uh, but at some World Cups she would just kind of falter and make a lot of mistakes and all that kind of stuff so like for example she went to the European Championships and um, didn't get a medal in the event final she qualified for uh, and seemed pretty upset about it all so yeah I think that's kind of that situation there um, so yeah, it was pretty obvious that the Averina sisters would go, but the twins have been extremely injured. They're just, oh uh, my god. Essentially, they kind of went from being like the Simone Biles in rhythmic gymnastics to having no one to compete against them, I guess with the exception of Lenoy. And even then, Lenoy just kind of got close, never really like, she, Lenoy didn't really overtake them quite often as much as they would themselves if that makes sense um so it was often kind of like the twins one and two and Lenoy three but um yeah so after the pandemic 
and all that situation kind of ended and competing was like opened up again they had much more competition from uh the two belarusian girls that i mentioned previously boriana kaylin and sofia Raffaelli. between those four they really put a lot more pressure on them and i think in turn viner also put a lot of pressure on them those two girls have honestly just put loads of pressure on them if you watch them at european championships they were like crying left right and center uh there's been times where you can like watch them like i think it's russian championships and one of them was like crying in a corner uh another time one came onto the carpet uh, crying with like a ribbon when she was about to go and do her ribbon i don't remember which twin she was yeah very very visibly upset so i think these two just honestly are dealing with a lot of pressure if you've ever watched some of the documentaries from um russia you can know that they don't really treat their athletes all that well or at least in rhythmic gymnastics they don't i don't think that's the case for every sport otherwise i don't think people put their children into the, those sports and i don't think that's the case for every coach either so it's just some of the stuff that they say to their athletes is honestly terrible so it's not like that shocking that they're really visibly upset all the time but they seem even more upset this year and on top of that i don't know if how great their relationships are with other athletes i i, I don't really know i'll try and find the video but they're at euros um they were on the podium with alina garnesco and they just kind of like came together to take like a sister picture i guess and alina's just kind of like doing peace signs and like making kind of like light of it all but i mean if you're on the podium with like a third person it's like you probably should include them not kind of exclude them so nonetheless that's just kind of like the russian situation on top of that there was like videos of dina collapsing at european championships because her back was spasming and at the very last competition that the russian russians attended before Co tokyo like the moscow world Ch challenge cup um arena didn't end up competing due to a leg injury so that's kind of the situation with the russians and i think this kind of is a decent talk about each team now i'll move on to the drama about the podium so now that we got all of the kind of national team drama out of the way and kind of who was chosen from each country i'm going to kind of go through the top 10s qualification and all-around final scores and kind of just have a discussion on that because there's quite a lot of um, controversy on some of the results so essentially uh, the qualifications finished one, two, three, Dina, Arena, Lunoy, uh, fourth being Alina, fifth Anastasia, sixth Milena, seventh Nicole, eight Boriana, nine Victoria, and tenth Christina. So this is the top ten in qualifications. I'll put kind of all the scores up. And I did some of my own kind of look into some of the numbers and investigated some of the biggest changes so there are the top i guess like uh three largest um changes had to do with lenoy ashram or sorry versus the qualification versus the final lenoy ended up scoring 4.05 higher in hoop than she did in qualification um alina ganasco scored 3.7 higher in clubs than she did in qualification and uh, in the other direction arena averina scored um 4.05 less in ribbon than she did in qualification so you can kind of see that these three athletes had a lot of issues slash um just kind of had a lot of issues with some of the apparatuses um whether it be either in the final or in the qualification um i think alina had a big jump in difficulty alone i think that was kind of one of her difficulty both difficulty and execution she ended up dropping uh both clubs and had to go in like two different directions to pick it up um I think she also dropped a club and you could like barely notice it because she like kind of kicked it up with her foot but she kind of ended up both losing difficulty because as soon as you stop a part of your routine you it's not necessarily like your difficulty goes down but 
your routine is jam-packed so if there's any break in your routine if something doesn't go exactly as planned you kind of don't aren't able to complete like a different difficulty element so that's kind of what happened there and because she had these loss of apparatus she ended up getting a smaller difficulty score um with an Illinois her biggest issue had to do with the fact she didn't finish her routine with the hoop so there's like a double deduction one for uh not finishing your routine with your apparatus and the next deduction being um like dropping the apparatus so she had a double deduction there and when it came to arena Verena, she got a, her ribbon in a knot had to essentially stop her routine run off to the side grab the replacement apparatus so that ended up again stopping difficult possible difficulty and uh some execution so that was kind of like some of the biggest changes i guess between qualification and final for specific apparatuses it ended up changing the scores a lot so i ended up doing a little bit more kind of a i guess research so if we were to take uh lenoy's three qualification scores between ribbon clubs and ball but we took the score for hoop in the final you would have seen that she would have scored 107.15 which in qualifications that would have been the top score and in the all-around final that would have been like the third best score so Lenoy did have some um increases in other apparatuses small increase in clubs uh and also ball but nonetheless Lenoy ended up just doing a lot better because her main mistake kind of was thrown out of the window the other thing that I should note is the overall difficulty with Lenoy versus Dina Verena is um, quite different. For example, in the all-around final, Lenoy had a difficulty combined difficulty score between all apparatuses of 72, where Dina had a 70.7, and in qualifications, Dina had a 69.9. So Dina's... Uh, overall um how should i say difficulty increase by 0 0.8 i want to say yeah so there was a jump in difficulty for um dina there but there was also a jump in difficulty for a lot of the other athletes for example alina garnasco had a 66.3 difficulty throughout four apparatuses and qualification and that increased to uh 67.2 so there was that i think there's like two main um i guess scoring controversies one being should have Lenoy got gold and the second being should dina and arena switch and the third being i guess there's a third one um arena should have got bronze and not alina in my opinion i think like the i guess podium is correct i think uh, the hard thing with Dina, and I guess it's maybe to some extent to other people when it comes to, for example, like Simone Biles. People hate the idea, that so, or not hate the idea, but people really, really were upset that one girl who's dominating all quad doesn't end up cut, get, cutting the gold medal that everyone feels like she deserves because everyone kind of knows she's like the best and that she kind of should get it. But, and I feel like Dina's a kind of a si similar situation except Dina has to compete and she can't just you know bail in the same way Simone can but um it's kind of like a same idea where like a lot of people just kind of feel sad for someone who firstly was so dominant and on top of that like she is a good athlete but I think with any sport it's who's whoever best who whoever comes there the best on that day deserves to get the title and I think that's similar in the third place situation with Arena and Alina uh, people were saying, oh, Arena's three scores um, from qualifications, uh, with the exception of her ribbon, um, should have been enough for bronze. And it would have been enough had she not had such a disaster for ribbon. I think the, like, sure, maybe the judges weren't as lenient and whatnot, but at the end of the day, it is a competition, and she left something to be desired with such a dramatic fall and a dramatic, I guess, error. If you think about it, uh, so a lot of the people's comments is there shouldn't be an Olympic champion with drops. But when it happened with Russia, people weren't saying anything. 
Um, the other thing is, we, if we make those comments, then why, a, like, Arvina is fourth place instead of tenth place with such a, like, drastic error? Because in these co code of points, difficulty matters, and she had high enough difficulty that she deserved her placement. So, I, I don't know. I feel like some of these um, kind of conversations about who should get it, who shouldn't, are unfair. You know, when Simone Biles finishes with uh, a fall in an apparatus, people don't say anything. So, it just so happened that the very last apparatus, Lenoy had an issue. But, nonetheless, I think that's kind of that part. I think, like, the top three are deserved. And it is a sport with difficulty in execution. And it just so happens that Lenoy had uh, a nice cushion for herself. So, I think, in my opinion, the scores are fair. I'll try and bring some of these kind of stats into play. Um, so, I don't think there's too much more to comment. Uh, it's just kind of sad how some people think it's um, like judging against Russians because I don't think that's the case. If that was the case, I don't think Dina would have been able to win all year. I don't think that the Russians would have won all around, like the team gold medal in both men's women's artistic gymnastics. You know, I definitely think that yes politics can be a thing but I don't think this specific scenario was politics um, being a thing on top of that Dina's kind of not known to have clean routines where her sister Arena has so there's I guess a whole comment that Arena should be above Dina and I kind of agree in a certain sense like if you ever watch Dina versus Arena her sister definitely is um uh her sister definitely is cleaner but unfortunately it it never seems like the judging is entirely fair. It kind of just seems like everything's been thrown in the air. If you ever watch Clematis RG on YouTube, you'll see good breakdowns of the scores. And while usually like the placements are right, or like um, or more or less that you know the the top three should have been the top three, uh, you'll see kind of where the judging just doesn't make sense and where there's so many errors. I think in a sport like this, it might even be better if you could kind of go back and watch replays just because the Averina twins, you know, and basically everyone on the podium, they're doing things so quickly. It is so hard to both count difficulty scores and execution scores of how well everyone's doing everything in real time. So I think there's definitely like that advantage when we watch back as fans. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watch for listening and I hope you guys have a great day.